Hello everyone and welcome to our lecture on image transformations and alignment. We know by this point how to detect features, how to describe them and how to match them. So let's uh, try to find the relationship between any two images that we try to find after uh, matching these features. When we look at the book cover on the left, we can see that we need to do some rotation, some scaling and some translation to fit it where it belongs in the second image. This is called a similarity transformation. But when we try to align uh, two images like this, these uh, rotation, scaling and stuff like that will not help us perfectly align them. There is something more complex going on here. And that is what we will uh, learn about today. Finding the relationship between two images like this that is taken from the same location but with different uh, camera angles is very important for, for example, creating mosaics or panoramas where we put many images together uh, to create a much larger image uh, that we cannot take with a single uh, camera, for example. So for this, we need to look at image warping. Until now, when we played with images, we, we have done mainly image filtering over and over again, which changes the image brightness values in the end, whatever we do. It could be just smoothing, it could be just creating edges or whatever, but we are dealing with actual pixel values here. When we talk about warping, we will change the domain of the image or we will change the X and Y coordinates of the image. And here you can see that it is doing a scaling in one dimension, for example. We will look at what type of warpings that we can define for images. Let's talk about parametric or global warping, which will be our uh, main topic today. A translation, shifting the image, rotation or uh, changing the aspect ratio of the image are all examples of uh, parametric global warping. In order to implement this, we need to get the location of one pixel in the first image, apply the warping operator and get a second set of locations in the second image after warping. And this is called the transformation. When we talk about a global warping or a global transformation, we will just have a small set of parameters that we can apply to every pixel in the image the same way and it will all go to where they are supposed to in, in the end as opposed to applying different shifts or different transformations to different patches in the image, which uh, we will also do later in the lecture. Let's consider the simplest of these transforms, which is the linear transforms, which can be represented with a two by two matrix like this. Uh, just multiplying our uh, X and Y coordinates uh, with a simple two by two matrix. We can do scaling with this type of transformation if we just have a scalar factor in the diagonals of this simple matrix, for example, which will just multiply the image coordinate by some value, which will end up making the image larger or smaller. We can also do rotation with this representation and the angle of the rotation will appear as cosines and sines in our uh, linear transformation matrix and the inverse of this would be actually equal to the uh, transpose of this matrix. The inverse of scaling was just one over scale in the same uh, matrix as, as simple as that. What type of transformations can we represent with, a, with this simple 2 by 2 matrix? We can mirror the image if we just put a negative coefficient in uh, one of the diagonals, for example. We can also change the X and Y coordinates with each other, which would be mirroring with respect to X equal to Y uh, axis. But we cannot do translation. Just shifting the image by two pixels to the left is not a good match for a simple two by two matrix representation. We will find a solution to this uh, problem very soon. So the 2D linear transformations can be scaling, rotation, shearing and mirroring. In linear transformations, the origin will always end up at the origin in the second image as well, 
because if we multiply a matrix with a zero zero vector we will just get a zero zero vector also a line in one image will also map to another line in the second image the parallel lines will still be parallel after a linear transformation the ratios if something is uh, twice far away than something else from me for example that ratio will remain the same and it is closed under composition which means that if we apply two linear transformations to an image the overall transformation that we are applying is still a linear transformation in order to add the translation uh, into our simple matrix representation we need to define homogeneous coordinates and this is a very useful trick we use in many different uh, geometric operations that we do in images or uh, 3d spaces and we do this by adding one more coordinate that is meaningless so if we have an x and y pixel coordinates we will just add a one at the bottom of the representation and if we end up with a homogeneous coordinates that doesn't have one as the third element at the end we will just uh, divide the third element with the x and y to find our actual uh, x and y coordinates that we are trying to find out in the non-homogeneous regular space homogeneous coordinates essentially for every pixel define a line in the uh, 3d space and when we just fix the w or the third element in our homogeneous coordinates they they will all map to a plane as you see here and this plane will give us the actual image plane numbers uh, that we are interested in so how do we do translation with this 3 by 3 matrix it is as simple as this equation that you see here when we apply this multiplication to our uh, homogeneous uh, pixel coordinates it will just give us the translated coordinates and any transformation that has the 0 0 1 at the bottom of this 3 by 3 matrix are called the affine transformations and affine transformation has six degrees of freedom or we can change six different parameters in the image and we can do a translation also scaling with uh, that we used to do with uh, 2d coordinates as well as well as rotation and shearing and stuff like that that everything we could do with uh, linear transformations essentially and translation here or the property that changes from the linear transformations is that the origin does not map to the origin anymore because we are we are able to shift the image now with this representation but this is still not good enough uh, for finding the match between these two images so we need to do some more uh, stuff for example we will change the last row of uh, our uh, 3 by 3 transformation matrix and once we do that they are called homography and uh, a homography has eight degrees of freedom or eight values that we can change and we fix the number at the very end as one because remember that we are working in uh, homogeneous coordinates so if we define a homography that is two times uh, this function for example it will just create the two times the larger vector on all three uh, values in the homogeneous coordinates and when we divide the x and y with our third member in the vector they will cancel out anyway so this last ninth element in the homography matrix does not really uh, matter for us so now when we apply this image we are able to uh, do these type of uh, warps that changes the surface uh, that we are uh, looking at the image from and this also happens a lot in real life for example if we are photographing something planar uh, from two different angles the relationship between those images will be a homography or when we are only rotating our camera and not translating it or not changing its location just the rotation it will also define a homography between the two views of this camera we will look at the details of this in our uh, cameras lecture later in the semester when we apply this transformation uh, the simplified equations look like this and we will then divide uh, by the third element to get our uh, actual x and y coordinates after the homography transformation 
but this last element could very well become zero uh, depending on the values that we put in the x and y coordinates and when it uh, becomes zero then our x and y coordinates will uh, become infinite and this is exactly what it is able to represent or what we are able to represent with homogeneous coordinates we can put uh, points at infinity in our equation as well because in homography we can actually map a point at infinity to our regular image plane at, as the uh, infinite uh, point as you see in this uh, simple example let's warp some of the regions of this image with the homography and see what it looks like when we are looking from this angle the ground looks this way but we are, if we are looking from top down to the same ground it will look uh, this way and this is defined by a homography you can see the uh, lines at infinity actually here going at infinity in our uh, top down look uh, you will see these black areas in the mapped image they just don't have any mapping coordinates in our original image because we are now warping the image quite a bit so when we crop a square crop from that it may not have all the values that we want uh, naturally and we can also do the same thing to the wall that we are seeing on the side and when we do the corresponding different homography uh, transformation to that wall then it will look like this as if we are looking at it uh, head on and that is our answer to match these two images we need to find a homography that defines the relationship between these two images so that we can put these two together to create a larger image homographies include all the affine transformations which also included the linear transformations but now we are also able to do projective warps and origin still does not map to origin of course but now parallel lines are not necessarily parallel as we saw with the point at the infinity examples and the ratios that you see in the image are still not preserved but even homography is closed under composition so if we apply uh, back to back two homographies to an image it also corresponds to a single homography to that image which is just the multiplication of these two uh, 3 by 3 matrices which will also give us another homography and you can uh, use this uh, table as a like lookup table to remember what type of transformations that we defined today once we know what type of a warp that we want to apply the images these warps are only defined for uh, pixel coordinates then we need to find the actual color of the coordinates that we end up in so how do we compute the new pixel values with the new coordinates so for this we can just send each pixel location uh, to the next one and find the corresponding value but it may very well fall not to an integer coordinate but something in between it actually most of these uh, transformations in homography will end up in some middle pixel that doesn't correspond to the actual pixel that we are trying to find out so we need to somehow figure out the contribution of several pixels to one pixel that we are trying to find which is called uh, splatting but this can still result in holes if uh, one pixel doesn't have any mapping pixels to its immediate neighbors so to get rid of these holes we can just apply the inverse warping to our uh, final image to find the actual locations of the warped image in the original image then it will be easier for us to figure out which color it should uh, correspond to again using some type of reasoning for what that middle location between those uh, actual pixels should be and we that is essentially similar to resampling as we did in our uh, sampling and aliasing lecture which we can interpolate between different uh, color values but we need to do uh, some anti-aliasing pre-filtering uh, so that we don't get those weird uh, edges in the end the same story as our uh, sampling lecture so possible interpolation filters that we will also see in different uh, image editing programs like photoshop for example is uh, nearest neighbor which is just map the pixel if it is at 1.9 and 2.1 for example just pick the two two and two pixel 
or it could be by linear so look at all the immediate close by neighbors and find the weighted average with respect to their distances or it could be by cubic or sink which are just uh, a bit more complex representations for these interpolation task now we have a set of matches between A and B and we know what type of a transform is required to match the image on the left to the right one so we need to find that transformation itself with all the parameters in them using the point matches that we found from before and here uh, what we will do is we will find many many matches between these two images they will not be perfectly accurate all the time so we will try to find a transform that agrees with most of them essentially we, we will look into how we will get to the homography between these two images but let's let's start with a simpler case with just translating the image and trying to find that translation we may find these type of feature matches between these two images what we are trying to do is to find the shift between them so that we can patch them together like this as you see here how do we solve for xt and yt which is the amount of trans translation between these two images is by uh, looking at each match and their corresponding locations in the two images and define a displacement of a match i we can just find it by uh, looking at a single match pair and computing the translation between them because we only need two values x and y, delta x and delta y and we have uh, two equations from one match which is x y versus x hat and y hat so we can if we have many matches for example we can just uh, find the mean of these values from each match and determine that as our uh, actual uh, translation between these two images or we can look at this problem as a set of linear equations or a system of linear equations uh, where we have two unknowns x and y the uh, shift between these two images and we have uh, many knowns that are the matches we have this describes an overdetermined system of equations which means that there are more equations than uh, there are unknowns so in order to find the most agreeable solution we will find the least squares solution so let's look at what least squares mean and how we can formulate it so we will put all the equations from each point together and we will define some residuals which is if we apply this particular xt translation how good are we matching the final location for this particular pixel pair or the feature pair and we want to minimize the sum of squared residuals this is the same as taking the average for this uh, simple translation case uh, our overall cost function in the end is defined like this by summing up all the errors uh, that that are coming from the matches that we found and the least square uh, solution is just the minimum of this error whatever whichever xt and yt gives the minimum of this error will give us the least square solution uh, in order to find this solution we can uh, write the equation uh, that we saw here as a matrix equation like this and then it will be an a t equals b type of very simple uh, matrix equation that we can solve by minimizing our error this will not always give us zero actually it will never give us zero because the point matches will be a bit erroneous whatever we do because we cannot maybe localize them perfectly in x and y directions and uh, stuff like that so we need to find the most agreeable solution and we uh, so formulate this uh, error function like this as the squared error between our intended mapping and the final mapping and we can open up this uh, square and take the derivative with respect to t which is what we are trying to find out and equal it to zero the derivative if the derivative of an error function is zero it means that it is at a minimum or a maximum point because when the uh, curve makes a minimum or a maximum at the very top the derivative will be zero and we can simply write the solution down as a simple equation like this and find the corresponding t that would give us the best 
translation that we can find. This is essentially the same as fitting a line. So let's look at a, a bit simpler example that we have a bunch of points in X and Y uh, coordinates and we are trying to find the best line that uh, matches the distribution of these points. So here our uh, parameters are M and B which would define the line in this two dimensional space. So when we are doing a linear uh, regression what we are trying to minimize is this residual error with respect to each point. So we look at the distance between each point and our current estimate of the line and add them up and this is our cost. When we find the best uh, line that matches our cost will be as small as uh, it can possibly get uh, for a line equation. And uh, this is essentially again written as an AX equals B type of a simple equation. In affine transformations, now we have six degrees of freedom or six unknowns in our uh, transformation. And uh, we get, we still get two equations per uh, matched points. These are uh, X and Y coordinates that we are seeing in this uh, transformation equation. We can define the corresponding residuals just by applying the matrix to the X and Y coordinates and taking the difference between the intended final result and uh, what our uh, model is trying to do with the current transformation. And we just uh, define a cost function using uh, all the uh, point matches that we have found from before. We can uh, write this down as a matrix in, in a matrix form and just solve the same type of equation in the end essentially. This is, this is the main thing that we do when we are trying to find the warp between any two uh, images. It would be a good exercise for you if you uh, try to derive this matrix form from the uh, original equation that we saw before. It's, it's not very hard, you just have to write it out and see how it becomes a matrix. Okay, so let's find the homography uh, between these two images. Let's unwarp them. And we have uh, a bunch of extra unknowns when it is a homography because we have eight degrees of freedom this time. So we need at least four points uh, to define a homography because we get uh, two equations from each point. So we can just uh, write our uh, definitions down and we can see that these are not linear. So it will be a bit harder for us to uh, figure out how to solve this. And we can just do some algebraic manipulations like this and create an AX equals B type of solution that uh, flattens out the homography matrix into a vector uh, so that we can go, go back to the AX equals B type of an equation that we know how to solve. And we will just put all the point locations uh, that we know of uh, in the A matrix and just solve this uh, least squares uh, problem by minimizing a h uh, minus zero cost function. And since h is or the homography is only defined up to a scale, which is the ninth uh, element that we uh, could set as one, for example, we only need to solve for the unit vector, which can be uh, found as the eigenvector of a transpose a that corresponds to the smallest eigenvalue of that matrix. And as we have eight unknowns, we have we need a minimum of uh, four point matches in order for this equation to work out and give us a reasonable solution. But as we did with uh, previous least square solutions, this could be as many points as possible and the resulting uh, solution will give us the most agreeable homography for all these set of points. Once we have an image A and image B, we will compute the features uh, of each image independently and describe them. And then we will try to find the matches between the features in image A versus features in image B. And we will use uh, these matches to approximate or compute our homography matrix that defines the relationship between these two images. And there are a bunch of things that could go wrong. For example, one of the biggest issues here are outliers, inlier points that are good matches between two uh, images. But we will also have from time to time uh, outlier matches that just gives us very incorrect locations. 
And when we are trying to find out the least square solutions that tries to agree with all the points that we have found as uh, matching points, these outliers will create very large errors and it will shift our uh, solution to an incorrect one. So we need to somehow get rid of these outliers before we can do our image alignment in peace, uh, which will be the topic of our uh, next lecture in RANZAC. Our required reading today are uh, sections 2.1 and 8.1 and I will see you in our next lecture on RANZAC. Thanks for listening.